People tend to get a lot of questions about temporal resolution on their test. So today I'm going to go ahead and tell you all the things you need to know about temporal resolution. This type of resolution is defined as the ability to detect moving structures on the display image. And it's only determined by one factor, and that's frame rate. Frame rate is defined as the number of ultrasound images that can be displayed in one second using the units of hertz. Anytime you hear the word frame rate, think temporal resolution. And anytime you hear the word temporal resolution, think frame rate. Because these two names are very closely related, if not exactly related. Temporal resolution and frame rate are directly and proportionally related. That means when temporal resolution goes up, frame rate also goes up. When temporal resolution goes down, frame rate also goes down. Frame rate and temporal resolution are directly related. That means as frame rate increases, temporal resolution also increases. Frame rate is determined by two factors, and you really need to know these. The first one is scanning depth. Depth and frame rate are inversely related. That means as depth increases, your frame rate and temporal resolution will decrease. The second one is the number of pulses per frame, which is also inversely related to frame rate and temporal resolution. So as the number of pulses go up, temporal resolution and frame rate go down. In this diagram here, you can see that each line represents one pulse. When you compare the scanning lines of this image to this image, this image will have the best temporal and frame rate because there are less pulses per frame when compared to this image. Frame rate is limited by two factors, and the first one is speed of sound. As the speed of sound go up, your frame rate and temporal resolution also go up. That means they're directly related or directly proportional. The second one is depth of view, which is inversely related and related to the scanning depth. As the depth increases, your frame rate and temporal resolution will go down. The number of pulses per frame is determined by three factors. The first one is sector size, the second one is line density, and the third one is the number of focal points. When we talk about the sector width, this right here represents a narrow sector width. This one here represents a wider sector width. Which one of these images do you think has the best temporal resolution? This one right here has the best temporal resolution as well as the best frame rate because your sector width is narrow. When your sector width is narrow, you're going to have less lines per frame and less pulses, meaning your temporal resolution and your frame rate will stay high. When compared to this, when you widen your sector width, you have more lines and more pulses per frame, which will degrade your temporal resolution and your frame rate. Your line density is equal to the number of pulses per frame, as well as the spaces between each line. A name that's related to number of focal points is multifocus. On your SPI boards, you will definitely have to know what improves and what degrades temporal resolution. We're going to start with what degrades temporal resolution. The first one is when you increase your depth, this directly affects it. High line density, which is represented by this image here. More pulses or scan lines per frame. Each line represents one pulse. Spatial compounding, or any type of compounding, when you have slower pulse speeds, and keep in mind the speed of a pulse is a limitation of temporal resolution as well as frame rate. Fill-in interpolation, phase rate transducers, and multifocus. The reason why multifocus will degrade temporal resolution and frame rate is because you're adding more than one pulse per scan line. This image here represents three pulses per scan line, creating three focuses at various depths. This image here only has one focus or one pulse per scan line. This image would produce greater temporal resolution and frame rate as opposed to this one. However, this image would produce better and far greater lateral resolution. The focus in multifocus just explains the pulse. You could almost say multipulses because multipulses and multifocus is the same thing. When you add a focus, you're just adding a pulse. Keep in mind, anytime that you add more than one pulse per scan line, you will degrade temporal resolution and frame rate. All the things that improve temporal resolution include Decreasing depth, which directly affects it, a low line density, fewer lines or pulses per frame, represented by this image here. This has fewer lines and less pulses per frame, faster pulse speeds, and right magnification. Make sure you log this in memory. Right magnification will actually improve temporal resolution. Here's a list of other things that will improve temporal resolution, and these include a low ensemble length or low packets, small color box size, higher PRF, which indirectly affects temporal resolution and frame rate. Keep that in mind. A high duty factor. The reason why a higher PRF and a higher duty factor increase temporal resolution as well as frame rate is because anytime that these two are high, your depth is low, 
meaning the sonographer decreased the depth to increase temporal resolution and frame rate. A low PRP, this indirectly affects your temporal resolution and frame rate. Shallow imaging or shallow depths, this has the greatest effect, keep this in mind. And when you decrease your sector angle. All the things that will degrade temporal resolution, and there's a big list here, but make sure you know all of these for your boards. The first one is called pulse inversion. Pulse inversion is a technique designed to utilize harmonic reflections while eliminating fundamental reflections. What pulse inversion is and what it was designed to do was utilize harmonic reflections while eliminating fundamental reflections. When it filters out all of the fundamental frequency, it leaves only the harmonic frequency for display. It functions by using two pulses of opposite polarity by transmitting them into the tissue in rapid succession. The received echoes from the pulses are added together and will cancel out the transmitted frequency, leaving the harmonics that were generated in the tissue. The advantages of pulse inversion is that it uses a wide bandwidth improving axial resolution, which means you have a low Q and a reduced sensitivity. It improves your signal to noise ratio and it improves your spatial resolution. The disadvantages is the time required to create a frame is doubled. That means your frame rate is halved and your temporal resolution is reduced by also decreasing by half. Pulse inversion basically means you're gonna have more than one pulse per scanning line. Spatial compounding, fill in interpolation, packets or ensemble length. When you turn on color Doppler, you're actually degrading temporal resolution. So make sure you keep that color box really small to the area of interest that you're evaluating. A high ensemble length, which is the same thing as packets. The act of steering your color box will degrade temporal resolution. Keep that in mind. Having a large color box size, a low PRF and a high PRP, PRF and PRP are indirectly related. When you're scanning in deeper regions, when you have more pulses, meaning you have a high line density, and also, like I said before, when your sector angle increases. Coded excitation will degrade temporal resolution, and I explained coded excitation in one of my earlier videos, 3D imaging, and low pulse speeds. Other ways that frame rate is improved is parallel beam forming. This allows two or more received signals, producing two or more scan lines for each transmitted pulse, so enabling higher frame rates. Last but not least, temporal resolution is degraded by persistence, which is also called temporal compounding and temporal averaging. These will all be very beneficial for you to know for your boards. What you'll have to know for your boards is that persistence is the same as temporal compounding and temporal averaging. What this will do is improve image quality by increasing your signal to noise ratio, by smoothing the image and reducing the noise and speckle. It functions by displaying a history of older images by frame averaging. The previous frames that are displayed are superimposed on the most current frame. But the drawback is it reduces frame rate, temporal resolution, and it's only effective for slow moving structures. While we're on the subject of signal to noise ratio, let's go over all the things that will improve it or increase it. And the first is output power, using coded excitation, using rejection, using spatial compounding or frequency compounding, or any type of compounding, pulse inversion, persistence, which is also called temporal compounding and temporal averaging, color priority, and harmonics imaging. In this image here, you can see that the sonographer has increased the depth, which will degrade temporal resolution as well as frame rate. And in this image here, the frame rate and temporal resolution is a lot better because the sonographer has decreased the depth. 